welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we gave some various operations on sets, where we define the intersection of sets, union of sets, difference of sets, uh, symmetric difference of sets. Uh, we also defined and gave examples on Cartesian product of sets. And lastly, we defined and gave examples on uh, power sets. So just as a recap uh, from the point where we left, uh, note that when you are defining the power set of a set, uh, the subsets have special names. For instance, um, so when you are defining power set of a set, uh, the sets or the subsets and the set A itself are called the trivial subsets, while other subsets are called non-trivial subsets. So for instance, uh, A having one and two as the elements, then the power set of A will be given by, so we have two elements in A, so the maximum number of elements in any subset will be two, and then followed by one element each and then zero element each. So we have zero element subsets are given by the empty set. Now elements which be formed by one, as uh, subsets which be formed by one element each, for this case will be subset with one, subset with two, <clears throat> and then finally the whole set. So where now uh, this and this are what we call trivial subsets of A, while these are what we call the non-trivial subsets. And we say that um, the cardinality of power set of A is always given by two raised power cardinality of A. So when a question asks you for the number of non-trivial subsets, then you'll take the whole formula and then subtract two, because always a subset a set is a subset of itself and also the empty set is a subset. And those two are what we call the trivial subsets. So you'll get the total number two power cardinality of A, then the answer you get to subtract two if they are asking you for the number of non-trivial subsets. But if it just ask you the total number of subsets, then uh, you give us two raised power uh, cardinality of A. So for instance, this they tell you that if we have an arbitrary set B uh, whose cardinality is say uh, 10, then the number of non-trivial subsets is simply given by two raised power 10, and then you subtract two. And then if we have a set 
uh, if phi is a set, then power set of phi will be given by just phi alone. And so which means the cardinality will just be one. And then if we have a set A given by just say one element A, then uh, the cardinality, the power set of this set will be having elements empty set and then the set itself, uh, which means the power set cardinality in this case will be two raised power. Uh, uh, will just be two, uh, which is the same as two raised power one, if you relate to the formula that we are getting, because we said the power set of A cardinality is given by two raised power cardinality of A. So for an empty set, cardinality is zero. So the number of elements in the power set you expect to be two raised power zero, uh, which is just as one as we see here. And then uh, this set A has one element. So you expect the cardinality of the power set to be two raised power one. So which will be just two as the elements are in this set here. So then now uh, let's go to applications. on counting problems. And we give what we call the inclusion exclusion principle. which is a principle or a technique that will help us to do some counting when we have uh, some sets under consideration. So uh, case one, let A and B be any two finite sets. And we insist that A and B are finite sets uh, to simply mean that the cardinality of A and B is a well-specified uh, integer, a positive integer. So cardinality of A union B is given by cardinality of A plus cardinality of B minus cardinality of A intersect B. So that's what we call the inclusion exclusion principle for counting elements in the union of two sets. And this is a simple interpretation of this formula. So if I have this as my set A, I have this as my set B, then uh, we know that A, Union B uh, will be formed by this part, say one, this part two, this part three. So for me to count elements in one, two, and three, I simply mean that I will pick elements in the blue circle, which is set A. So which means I'll be taking one, 
plus two. And I add two elements in the red circle, which is set B. So red circle is formed by two and part three. But then you see, by doing so, I'll have counted this middle part twice. By saying A plus part B. Or, or said what is, uh, what is contained in set A plus what is contained in set B. I'll have taken this middle part two at twice. But so then to balance, to avoid double counting, then I remove one of the two parts which have been counted. So then when I remove it, then I'll have just one plus two and then plus three. So then now uh, one plus two plus three, what I have in one, if I add to what I have in two, plus what I have in three, then I'll have taken care of all the elements in the A union B. So that's why we say that cardinality of A union B is cardinality of A plus cardinality of B, then minus the intersection. Because by saying cardinality of A plus cardinality of B, uh, the intersection is counted twice. So to avoid double counting, then remove one extra part that has been one extra uh, counting of the intersection that has been done in A cardinality plus B cardinality. So this is a formula that we'll adopt whenever we want to count elements within the union of two sets. And then, uh, number two, uh, if we have three sets, let A, B, and C be any three finite sets. Then we can also define the union, cardinality of the union of A, B, and C which is cardinality of A plus cardinality of B plus cardinality of C minus cardinality of the pairs A intersect B minus A intersect C minus B intersect C. And then I add A intersect B intersect C. So for three sets, uh, it is as good as you say, I'll take the sum of all the elements in the three sets, and then I subtract elements in pairs. So there are only three possibilities, A, B, uh, the intersection, A, B, A, C, and B, C. And then I finally add the elements within the intersection of three of all the three sets. So cardinality of A and B and C is what I have in A plus what I have in B plus what I have in C, then subtract what is common to A and B, what is common to A and C, what is common to B and C, and then add what is common to all the three sets. So not to solve counting problems, we use inclusion, exclusion, principle and or Venn diagrams. 
By this, I mean, there are problems which uh, will be solved just by the formula, say one and two, or you can solve them by just drawing a Venn diagram and interpreting the values in the problem, or there are some uh, which can just be solved, uh, which can be solved by combining both the Venn diagram and inclusion expression principle. Example. So one, in a class of 50, college students, 30 are studying, C++, 25 are studying, Java, and 10 are studying both languages. One, how many students are studying either of the computer languages And then number two, how many are studying, are not studying any of the two languages? And number three, how many are studying C++ only? And then number four, how many are studying Java only? Number five, how many study exactly one language? So this is a very interesting problem. And the best way to solve such kind of problems is to read the problem understand how many sets are of interest, and then draw a Venn diagram and try to input in the values as per the question. So here, we have a class having 50 students, and then 30 are studying C++ and 25 are studying Java. So it turns out that there are two main subjects under consideration, or there are two main sets uh, we'll have within our universal set. The set having those students studying Java and the set having those students studying C++. And so we say, let A be the set of students studying C++. 
plus plus B be the set of students studying Java and this be the total number of students in class. So you is the issue of the universal. So then uh, this means that the cardinality of A, which means the students studying C++ from the problem is given by 30. Cardinality of B, the students, number of students studying Java is 25. And the total number of students in the class is 50. And when you say 10 are studying both languages, means that it is the common, uh, which means the intersection of A and B. So the cardinality of A intersect B cardinality is given by 10. So with this information, uh, you draw a Venn diagram. So this is our universal set, uh, which has a total of 50. And then let this be those who are studying C++. And then Uh, let this be those who are studying Java. And then you can put small letters within this figure to help you to interpret the problem. You can say, let outside the circles be small a, this part be small b, this part be small d, a uh, small c, then this part be small d. So when you say cardinality of a is that means, if we add the total number in the blue circle, we should get 30. And blue circle is made by part B and part C. So I mean B plus C give me 30. And then total U is 50. 50 will be formed by A part plus part B plus part C plus part D. So A plus B plus C plus D is 50. And then B cardinality is 25. So when I add the total in green circle, I should get 25. So C plus D should be 25. And the intersection is 10. So which means C is 10. And you can call this equation one, this equation two, this equation three, this equation four. So solve this backwards. So uh, C is already 10, so there's no problem with C. And then from equation three, so where the C you put 10 plus D should give you 25. So this means D is 15. So then you put here 15. So this is 10. And then B plus C is, 50, C is 10 equals to 30. So B should be 20. So we put here 20. And then in question one, A plus B, we have gotten to be 20 plus C, which is 10, plus D, which we have gotten as 15, will give us a total of 50. So we'll have A plus, this is 30, 45 equals to 50. So which means A is five. So outside is five. So once we have the complete Venn diagram filled with the numbers, then it is easier now to interpret the problems from the diagram. 
So uh, the first one asks how many students are studying either computer languages. So from English point of view, the word either is simply the interpretation of the word all. So all means union. So either languages means that you are either in A or B or even common to A and B. So simply means you are referring to union. So it's as good as having or providing the union of A and B, uh, which will be 20 plus 10 plus 15. And this will give us 45. Uh, which, in fact, you could have gotten the same answer without doing the Venn diagram by using the inclusion exclusion principle by saying cardinality of A union B is the same as cardinality of A plus cardinality of B minus cardinality of A intersect B. And this was 30 plus 25 minus 10. So this is 55 minus 10, which will still give us 40. Five. So the answer to the first part uh, will be 45. How many are not studying any of the two languages? So if you go to the Venn diagram, not studying any of the two languages means that you are not found anywhere within the two circles that represents those studying Java and those studying C++. And the number outside the circles is five. So the answer becomes five. And then how many are studying C++ only? So C++ was set A, but now when we add the term only means you should be in the set A that is not shared by B. So you should be only in this part, uh, part B. So the answer will be 20. And how many are studying Java only? Java only means that you are in B, but you should not be counted to be in A. So this will be the part D, 15 alone. And how many are studying exactly one language? So those who are studying exactly one language are those who are studying either C++ only or Java only. And it's as good as defining the symmetric difference of A and B. So which will be this number 20 plus this number 15. So this will be 20 plus 15. Uh, this will give us 35. So that is how we interpret uh, that uh, given problem. So more other examples are given in other previous uh, lecture recordings. Uh, please uh, follow them to see how to interpret uh, problems involving the applications of uh, the inclusion exclusion principle and counting using Venn diagram. Thank you.